Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome to the Designer Studio episode for the BTR4 APC designed by Mary Wilson. Uh, this kit was part of our uh, Project Ukraine, our Ukraine benefit, which means the proceeds from it did go to uh, direct relief or various relief organizations doing good over in Ukraine. But we haven't had a time since we've had the printing, everything all come together because, well, these kits were put together under like rapid schedule changes uh, to be able to sit down and actually take a look at it. So now we've got a complete model and we've got our designer. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how this came together in the course of 72 hours, I want to say. Is <laughs> it, it really about how much time like you had? Yeah, right. <laughs> definitely felt like that. It was more like four days. -ish. Fair enough, still. But <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a speed build. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, got, it's a funky <laughs> shape to it. I mean, it's got yeah, a big sure. weird nose on it. The turret's like super far back and whatnot. And then obviously you kind of kept some of the steering mechanisms. So where did you start? Uh, well, I started with uh, one of Dan's older models, a different BTR uh, mm -hmm. that was Russian. Um, and he, he kind of gave it to me and was like, oh, so like you should make the BTR-4. It's like pretty much the same. <laughs> and so I was like, no, okay, like we're, we're starting with that. Um, it, is, it is not pretty mm -hmm. much the same. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the, the main differences is that the engine and the turret are swapped. So the engine is actually right in the middle and the turret is farther back. So if you're familiar with any of the other BTRs, you'll be like, oh, well, this is like pushed forward. And, and that whole swap uh, actually changed so much in this model because of uh, this like you can actually like steer a little mm -hmm. bit with these wheels so it's like I had to, to shift everything around in order to like which at that point you might as function. well be building a brand new yeah model. right so it's like so the back portion is actually very similar mm -hmm. and then as you move forward it's just it's just we're it's, throwing out the book yeah it's just it's just <laughs> completely different um, so I guess after I found out that it was more different than uh, <laughs> I thought it was going mm -hmm. to be. Um, I kind of just like jumped in to, yeah, kind of like flipping this around. So before like this control was in the front because mm -hmm. there's a periscope. Um, this periscope uh, doesn't like stick out the same way that the, the Russian one does. Um, also, I don't think they, they probably use it as much because they have to like flip these armored windshields up and it seems like more inconvenient to do it. Mm -hmm. I was just watching a video about it and I was like, maybe that wasn't like the, the best design uh -huh. <laughs> ever, like best design choice. Um, but so it doesn't have that protrude, protruding periscope up there. So like I switched it back to one of these pipes that uh, we were we were trying to decide if this is like an air conditioning unit or not because mm -hmm. we actually could not figure out what it was for. Yeah, sure, what um, is this box? Yeah, what, yeah. Is this, what is this box on top? Um, and then, so for the turret, I was actually really excited about because it's not often that I get to make a turret that a minifig does not go into. So normally oh, right. I have to make room for the fig and make room for like an opening working hatch, uh, which, is all, which is all fun and good. But this was kind of nice that I just got to like put on like the grenade launchers and mm -hmm. the smoke grenade launcher yeah. and like the gun, you know? So it's like all of those little details in there. Um, also really enjoyed brick building these launchers on the side. Uh, I use the, the candlestick pieces, mm -hmm. talked about them before, I love the candlestick pieces. Yeah, they come together real well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so I was excited about that opportunity. Um, and then as it got, you know, down near the wire, because mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we were really like trying to get these out. As quick as possible. As quick as possible, yep. because I mean, it really makes a difference, especially if we're trying to, to have releases every week to like keep this, mm -hmm. this fundraiser going. Um, so, and then I had like this front portion. I was like, man, like I do not know what to do for it because there's just so many angles. And it's also like an amphibious tank. So it's like this part flips up mm -hmm. and like there's just so much going on. So weird was, angles and functions. Yeah, that's right? not, that's not easy to and capture. And I was like, I, I have to have like the headlights on it without it. It looks funny. And mm -hmm. I was like, I want like this, yeah, like the windshield armor to be represented. <laughs> and then it was like, I have to have working hatches on the top. <laughs> there's just just so much to go into it. and I was just like Dan like what what are your thoughts mm -hmm. so I need he, time <laughs> so he kind of like was building uh, kind of what it looks like uh, but it was like a much larger scale because he was like here maybe like use these techniques mm -hmm. and so I was just like okay like I've got one day to do this like I got this mm -hmm. um, and then I I made this front and I'm actually like really happy with the way it turned out especially like in comparison to what it looked like before which yeah. you, you all will never see which is fine <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but I think I really actually captured like all the angles on it, especially since it's like it angles down and back yeah. at the same time. Um, we use those those hinge, 
I think they're hand, like the ball joints, mm -hmm. uh, which is really useful for that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Just kind of like show off some of the other printing because we, yeah, this is the first time that we've had printing for it. We, there are a lot of places for guns. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the This whole back portion, uh, that's where the, the crew sits. And because the engine and the turret are swapped, the crew no longer exits from the side. Right. So some of the previous those rear doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so we've got those rear doors in there. Which the printing on those is really sharp. Look at yeah, really all the prints turned out really, really clean. These windows especially and the yeah, insignias sure. on the side. Just really like, cool. I'll just keep rotating around so, so everyone can see it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so like like these these doors open in the back and then these hatches open as well on top. Mm -hmm. uh, you can stick a mini fig standing out in the back which um, saw a lot of pictures of that, like people in parades and stuff. Like right. that's that's where they're standing. Um, so we've got that. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Also, uh, someone asked uh, a while ago, but there's there's no room for a minifigure to sit inside of mm -hmm. the drive, but they can stand on like either hatch. Or yeah, be so they can stand in there. So. Same case for a lot of tanks at times. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Also, we've got these like little fun propellers in the back because otherwise, how does it move in yeah, the water? Yeah, right. It is, it I is think, amphibious. Yeah, mm -hmm. these amphibious vehicles just kind of crack me up because like <laughs> you see them like go in and then they kind of look like an alligator or mm -hmm. something where it's like just like the turret. Is, like, <laughs> and then they finally come out the other end. You're like, whoa. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think that's about mm -hmm. it. I think I feel like I covered everything. No, it's cool. It's nice to have a comprehensive breakdown of it and hear a little bit more, you know, behind the uh, the curtain of exactly what went into to composing this model. It does come with a minifigure as well, uh, so we'll have Landon in here a bit to talk more about that. But otherwise, Mary, thank you very much for checking in. Of course. Okay, so continuing with the BTR4, just like uh, Mary was under some serious time constraints to get this done, Landon's been in a very similar position with pretty much all of the uh, Project Ukraine lineup uh, for the minifigures as well. So this is the Army Rifleman included with the BTR-4, but what it really is is a derivative of the, the first minifigure we released, which was the Ukrainian uh, Army Rifleman. So we're going to discuss this in relation with the BTR-4, but also just as a little bit more comprehensive look at the standalone minifigure yeah. itself. Right on. So Sweet. Where do you want to start? Uh, camouflage pattern. So shout out to a friend of mine, uh, Detroitica, on Instagram. Uh, he helped me out designing this camouflage pattern. He's kind of a, a, a wizard with the camouflage patterns and algorithms to create it. So that's cool. He did a great job um, recreating this. I believe it's M14 uh, Ukrainian uh, camouflage. So that's a, that's a country specific, made in country uh, camouflage pattern. I think there are two color variations. There's like an arid version and a more like gray city kind of version. Mm -hmm. um, we opted for the more city uh, kind of grayish version. Uh, on this one. Um, I'm not 100% positive if it actually is two versions or just variances in um, like Either. the printing or, or oh, sure. you know, there's, um, that's kind of, that's always a problem with camouflage production and I can imagine if you're trying to like ramp up uniform production, um, that would be an issue. Gonna have some inconsistencies. So, um, this is the more gray colored pathway version. Anyways, uh, cool camo. Uh, next up, he's got his, his vest, um, his uh, plate carrier. Um, it's, they, they do make their own uh, uh, plate carriers like in country, but there's also like tons of just civilian purchase. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty much getting it from wherever yeah, they can. Wherever they point. can, yeah. yeah. Um, boots are, that was, that's, uh, in my opinion, one of the most iconic part of uh, Ukrainian uniforms, their boots. That's definitely made in country. Um, and it's, it's like kind of like dark brown, almost like a plumish like, tinge to it, dark, mostly dark brown. But uh, it's a boot that they produce themselves, they design themselves. Uh, in country, which is not a very common thing actually for um, a lot of forces, mm -hmm. so that was uh, a, um, just that stood out to me. Um, That's cool. Finishing up, finishing or uh, to to wrap it up, it's uh, his face. He's got a new some newer artwork for the uh, helmet strap, and that is the minifigure. Oh, armband. Mm -hmm. armband. Can't forget that. Yeah, very, very cool. And like I said, this is this is kind of derivative of a lot of the ones that have been coming out as various him with a tanker helmet on, slightly different face when it comes to who's with the stingers or who's, you know, with those various uh, um, missile launchers and whatnot that we released. So, like I said, just want a little bit more of a comprehensive breakdown. Interesting to hear, too, about how the camo came together and mm -hmm. then you're working in something that's like real time, yeah. watching it happen while trying to create stuff that is also accurate to something that... Quite frankly, there's no way to know if it's accurate or not yet because it's still happening. Right. So a definitely a unique challenge and a cool little look behind the curtain there. So there you have it. That is the Designer Studio episode for the BTR4, uh, part of the Ukraine benefit here at Brickmania. Thank you very much for watching.